I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome to the channel. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your support. If you're new here, I put out laid back luxury travel videos, and I am here to inspire and encourage you to buy that plane ticket, go on that adventure, and experience amazing travel destinations. Today, I'm in one of my favorite cities in the whole world. I'm in San Miguel, day and day, in the middle of Mexico in the state of Guanajuato. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you just a little bit about everything that you need to know before you come to San Miguel for the first time. So where is San Miguel located? It is located in the center of Mexico in the state of Guanajuato. The easiest way to get here is through the airports of Queretaro, which is QRO, or Leon. It is not the easiest place to get to because once you get to those airports, you have to take a shuttle to get here. It's about an hour and 10 minutes from Queretaro, and it is about an hour and a half from Leon. I have left a link in the description below for a great shuttle service that can get you from the airport here. So if you decide not to fly into Queretaro or Leon, you can get to Mexico City or other parts and you can take one of the luxury buses, the ADO bus, or go to Rome to Rio and book one of the buses and it's relatively inexpensive to get to San Miguel. I was coming from Guadalajara and it was going to be about $40 to get here. Unfortunately, it was going to take about eight hours with all of the bus stops. But a bus is a great way to tour around Mexico as well as flying. So once you're in San Miguel, the best way to get around, in my opinion, is to simply walk. There is a trolley, a tourist trolley, which is 100 pesos to get you up to one of the big sites where you can see the entire city called El Mirador, which is the sort of like the looking point. Um, you can take taxis if you want, and my recommendation is if you're gonna take a taxi, make sure to get the price before you get in the taxi. So tell them where you wanna go, and then get the price before you jump in. Other than that, I recommend walking. And there are lots of cobblestone streets. Sidewalks are super narrow here. My suggestion is, is that you have closed toed shoes and shoes that fit very well on your feet. You don't need hiking shoes here in San Miguel, but you do need shoes that are quite sturdy with a good tread on the bottom. Every morning in San Miguel, everybody's washing the sidewalk. And when it's raining in San Miguel as well, and those sidewalks are wet, those stones are wet, it is really, really slick to walk around. I love Mexico so much. I swear I was Mexican in another life, and my heart is Mexican. I don't know what it is for having all this blonde hair, but I am Mexican. And I want to share with you everything that I love about Mexico. And I have actually created a trip to San Miguel. It's a five-day, four-night trip and it's only going to be for 10 people. It is in the laid back luxury style. It is going to be high end, but low key. It's all about learning a little bit about Mexico, learning a little bit about the food. We're going to have a tequila and mezcal tasting. We're going to be doing a cooking class and we're going to be staying in a wonderful hotel very close to the center in San Miguel. So if you would like to learn more about my trip, go to the description below and click the link that says trip to San Miguel. It is going to be spectacular, I promise you wanna go. Pretty much all year round, San Miguel is a wonderful place to stay. If you're from the South like me, it is extremely hot in July and August, so I recommend coming to San Miguel in the summer months. Now, July and August here in San Miguel are the rainy months, but it's only rain in the afternoons. I would say the temperature has been about 90 degrees for maybe an hour and a half, but in the morning I need a jacket and a pair of pants because it's nice and cool and absolutely delicious here. The other times to come are over the holidays. The Dia de los Muertos, which is November 1st, is a big festival and a great time to come, except the city is completely packed. Other times to come are in the springtime when the flowers are coming up and it's beautiful, beautiful weather here most of the year because you're at altitude in the mountains in the center of the country. Also, there are some fantastic restaurants where you kind of like want to dress up in your boho chic and um, kind of just live it up a little bit. So I would definitely bring a 
uh, maybe a maxi dress or something that's just a little bit nicer. Guys, if you want, you can bring some, just a pair of khakis if you want to go to one of the nicer restaurants. So let's talk a little bit about the culture here in San Miguel. So you have 175,000 people. It is very Mexican, but with the expats, you have a very international vibe. They have a symphony here. They have a botanical gardens. It is very artsy. You find lots of shops with beautiful artisan materials and things that have been produced all over Mexico. It is, um, in my opinion, a slower sort of coffee culture. If you get up super early in the morning, you basically have the city to yourself. It's not until around 10 o'clock that the restaurants get busy for breakfast and life is just a little bit later and a little bit slower here in San Miguel. And it just has the best just the best vibe. In my opinion, costs in San Miguel are more expensive than they are in other parts of Mexico. I was just in Guadalajara last week and costs were much less than they are here in San Miguel. Restaurants are quite expensive. I would expect to spend for a nice dinner with cocktails anywhere from 30 to $45, which is actually quite expensive for Mexico. Hotels, I would say three-star hotels are around $70, $75 a night. You can also stay in four-star hotels, expect to spend 150 to about $220 a night. While I'm here, I pay cash for almost everything and at the restaurants and at the shops, if you're going to use a credit card, they usually charge you a fee, a credit card fee as well. So make sure to unlock your ATM when you're traveling here so you can go to the ATM, you can get out lots of cash. So speaking of ATMs, I suggest that you go to an ATM that is inside a bank. It is uh, safer inside a bank, they have cameras, and you're less likely to get your uh, card number swiped if you are inside of a bank. And you can tell which ones are the banks because that's where the line is outside of people standing trying to get their cash because it is very driven by cash here in San Miguel. I touched a little bit on the prices of a hotels, but a really cool thing to do while you're here instead of staying in a hotel is renting a house where you get a chef or going to Airbnb and renting a place that is on your own. Just make sure that it is uh, gated or guarded and it is in a secure location. You wanna make sure that you are safe. Everywhere in the world there are pickpockets and bad things happen. So you just wanna make sure no matter where you're staying, here or anywhere else in the world, that you keep yourself safe. Also, when you're staying here, whether it's a hotel or you're staying in an Airbnb or you've gotten a house with a chef, you want to stay about, I would say, four days. Four days, you can pretty much do everything you want to do from eating and the rooftop bars and all kinds of shopping. And you can take a day trip or two, maybe to the thermal spas or to go out to the winery. You also want to be close because it is a walkable city and you want to be able to walk everywhere. Also, after dark, you want to make sure that you are not wandering off into some neighborhood where you're not sure where you're headed. The heart of San Miguel is the Jardin and La Parroquia, which is the beautiful church that everybody sees the photos and then the garden in the middle. If you go there super early in the morning, not super early, but even 8, 8.30, you have the place to yourself if you want to take pictures. Also, if you like to take photos, if you'll go behind La Parroquia, so go down the street to the right and zigzag right behind La Parroquia, there is a great street where you can take amazing photos of the backside of the parochia, the church, and you can get the dome and then the spires, and it is a perfect place for Instagram. The other place that I recommend going to get Instagram photos is the street called Chiquitos. There's rarely anybody on there, and the houses are absolutely gorgeous. So if you're an Instagrammer or you want some great photos, those are a couple of places, early morning La Parroquia, behind La Parroquia and Chiquitos. So when staying in San Miguel, I recommend staying four nights, five days, and make sure that you take the flights early into Queretaro or Leon. Some of the flights arrive at 11 a.m., so you basically get the entire afternoon here. Four nights, but you're getting five full days. Some of the things that I recommend you go and see, go to the La Parroquia, I Definitely recommend going to some of the rooftop bars like Atrio or uh, Azotea or Quince. Very, very fantastic places to go and see everything that there is in the city. 
I suggest that you go to the Mercado des Artesanias, I think I said that correctly, and do all of your shopping for your souvenirs and your friends. You can buy pottery, you can buy artwork, you can buy um, pewter, everything. There's a great shoe store here called San Miguel Shoes where they hand make shoes, which a lot of my friends in Austin have those shoes. There's a couple of great stores as well. And if you would like to know those, I um, have left them in the description below. When you're out to dinner and you're at those rooftop bars, tipping is expected here in San Miguel and in Mexico in general. It depends on where I am, but I typically tip between 15 and 20%. Uh, some people say 20% is too much. Some people say 15% is too much. It just depends on how you feel the service is. I also suggest that you tip in your hotel room. They leave, uh, a lot of the times, they leave little envelopes for the maids because it's really nice to have that, that Mexican service where they're looking after you. So I do suggest that you leave a little bit of a tip for your maids as well in the hotels. So that event covers everything that you need to know before you come to San Miguel. If you have a tip or a trick or a suggestion, restaurant or a tour, make sure to leave it in the comments below because I'm always learning about every city I visit in Mexico. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I'll see you in San Miguel either on my trip or on one of the rooftop bars where I love their cocktails. So cheers everybody, bye.